guys, welcome to a Conditioned Nerd review of Timeline. We picked up two sets uh, last week at New York Comic Con and we loved it so much that we wanted to bring you a quick video today. Um, each set, there are five, can be played individually or you are really encouraged to mix them together. Uh, we had picked up diversity and inventions, but there's also historical events, discoveries, uh, and music and cinema. There are about 110 cards in each set, so if you combine all of them, that's over 550 cards, which is epically large. Um, but here, with just two decks, we have about 220 cards. Um, we're going to do a quick playthrough for you today and let you know what we think of this amazing new game. So the object of this game is to be the only player with no cards remaining in front of you at the end of the game. You do this by placing each of your cards down on the timeline in the correct chronological order. If you are the only person in your round to place their last card, you win. So let's set up the game and get started. You can play this game with two to eight players and depending on the number of players, you get dealt a different number of cards. With six to eight players, uh, you get dealt four cards. With four to five players, you get dealt five cards. And with two to three players, you get dealt six cards. So we're obviously playing with two players today. So here I am dealing out six cards. Then you take the leftover uh, deck you place it down and you leave space for a discard pile. We'll get into that in a second. Um, you don't look at the back of your cards because that would be cheating. On the backs of the cards are all the dates for the timeline. So set them out in front of you on the table so there's no risk of seeing what the dates are. Uh, then you take the first card from the deck and that becomes the first card on the timeline. In this situation, the card is uh, Mount Rushmore is completed which happened in 1941. So that is the first date on our timeline. So we'll place that about right there and we'll get started. Okay, so I will go first and I will take the invention of the flute and say that that took place before the Mount Rushmore was completed in 1941. I flip it over and it took place in negative 35,000. Your turn. All right. Um, so now let's see. I am going to take um, the invention of the printing press, which uh, I will say happened between the invention of the flute and the completion of Mount Rushmore. So let's turn that over. 1437. That's right. All right. Let's go with... Hmm. The invention of the color television, I will say, took place after the completion of Mount Rushmore. 1938. All right. So since I got it wrong, it goes into the discard pile, and I have to draw another card and put it back in my hand. All right. So now I'm going to say that the invention of the newspaper came after the invention of the printing press. I'm trying to be a little logical here. So we're going to set that down, flip it over, 1605, I am correct, so we'll keep going. Okay, let's go with the Legend of the Minotaur. I will say that that took place after the invention of the flute, but before the invention of the printing press. Negative 1600. Good job. Um, all right, I have four cards left. Um, let's go with the invention of the steam engine. I'm pretty sure I know when that happened, but I could be wrong. We're going to put it here. Flip that over. 1712. All righty. Let's go with the invention of the combustion engine mm -hmm. and say that that took place after the steam engine, but before Mount Rushmore. 1860. Good job. All right. Um, now it's getting hard. Um, let's try the invention of the lightning rods. I'm actually going to say that that happened pretty early on, just because I think that probably was a problem at some point. I'm going to put it here. 
Feel good about that? Hush. 1752. No wow. Wrong. Totally wrong. Totally uh, wrong. So draw another card. Your turn. Uh, the invention of the hypodermic syringe. Um, uh, this is a good question. I'm going to go with between the steam engine and the combustion engine. 1841. Well done. That was luck, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I want to now look at the invention of the compass. I think, all right, let's see. I'm going to try to do some deductive reasoning and put it here in between the printing press and the newspaper. Oh, 1090. Ooh. Not doing so hot. All right, all right. I am salivating how good this is going so far. Let's go with the first appearance of Frankenstein Monster. Um, we knew from earlier that the color television happened after Mount Rushmore, and I believe Frankenstein was black and white. So I'm going to say it took place before Mount Rushmore and after the combustion engine. 1818. Um, it no. was a book. The, it was a book. Right. It was a book. A book. <laughs> Darn television. Okay, so I have to discard <laughs> and draw another card. All right. Your turn. Um, I, oof, this is hard. The dates are getting closer. It gets more difficult. Um, the invention of the Winchester rifle happened in the 1800s, I'm going to guess, but I'm going to guess it happened pretty early. Mm, you know, I didn't see any Winchester rifles during Frankenstein's time. 1866. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Didn't they come at him with pitchforks and ha -ha. they should have came in with a rifle? Um, okay, let's go with... Um, the Pythagorean Theorem. And I have no idea. No idea. Is that like a cave painting? Um, that looks like a unicorn. I don't know what this is. Let's let's say it took place um, before the invention of the printing press, right? This is a cave drawing. Let's see. Yay! Negative 548. Well done. Um, all right, so... I just pulled this card. It looks pretty straightforward. The advent of hip hop. Maybe you should have gotten I that card. I should know that. Brooklyn. Um, we're gonna throw it in here after 1941 because that sounds about right. 1974. Okay. So I am down to my last card, which is, sorry, let me just move. Messing, you were holding on to this one, weren't messing you? Messing with the timeline here. Um, my last card is the first flight of the space shuttle, which I am going to guess and say it took place after hip hop. 1981, I am out of cards, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like I'm the big winner. Um, great game. I appreciate it. Anytime. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this game. We really do. Um, like we said earlier on, we have the first two sets. We're looking to get the remaining three, which would give us somewhere around 500 cards. But I think we highly recommend this game, right? I think it's fun. Yeah, it's, it's a blast to play. And since you can play with up to eight people or as low as two, it means we can play at home or we can share with our friends when they come out, you know, hang out at the bar, hang out at our place, where, whatever you want to do, wherever you want to go. Um, the boxes also look really cool. I picked them up because they look cool. They're 10 They're kind of cool. and they're raised and that's really nifty. Um, the pieces all fit in really nicely, which is always important if you're carrying them around and traveling with them. Until you start getting 500 cards, it's going to be a little challenging. Then that's going to be yeah. a lot of boxes. Um, but yeah, great game. Ages 8 and up. Yeah. Um, you learn something from it. And I know people have questioned the replayability of it because it's dates and they are static in time, but with so many cards and so many dates, unless you're a real big history buff, or I don't know, you play like every day, you're probably gonna get a lot of replays out of this because there are a lot of cards and you can't always remember the exact specific date of that exact thing. So it definitely uh, can be replayed over and over and over again. 
Well, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed, and we hope to see you next time.